Well, hello everyone and welcome to another video. In this video, we'll try to make a launcher in Flutter. There are many awesome launcher apps available on the Play Store and today we'll try to make that with Flutter. Now, let me first show you what I'm talking about. So here I have my device and this is the default launcher. But when I click on the home button, it gives me an option for selecting the launcher of my choice. Either I could choose the default one or the custom one. So I'll click on this and it kind of launches the application. And as soon as it's launched, all the icons slowly fade in. Now I have kept the duration of animation quite longer because I wanted to make sure that you see it happening. For making this launcher, I'll be using the dependency called Launcher Assist. And if you look at the documentation, you'll notice that currently this dependency offers three methods, namely get all apps, launch app, and get wallpaper. And we are using all three of those in making of this launcher. So our launcher lists all the apps, shows the device wallpaper, and if you click on any one of those apps, it opens it up. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by CodeStore. It's a startup built by programmers for programmers. CodeStore makes the process of app development much more easy by providing source codes of various pre-built Android apps. Just select any one of these free or premium apps and get its source code right away. You can also get these premium WordPress themes for free. They also have a very devoted set of developers whom you can hire to solve your problems, including myself. It's a brilliant idea from a developer's perspective. So the link of the app is in the description below. Alright, so I have built a new project and I have a basic boilerplate of the code. First, I'll include the necessary dependencies. So I'll navigate to pubspec.yaml and I'm going to start off with including the latest version of launch assist, which is 1.1.3 at the time of recording. I'm also going to include permission handler. Next step is to go to the android manifest.xml. So I'll come inside of the android folder, then navigate to app and then main and then I will open up the manifest file. And the manifest file basically contains the necessary information about your app. Now in order to retrieve the wallpaper, we would have to read the external storage. So I'll include the necessary permission over here. Now we need to tell android that our app is not a normal app, it's rather a launcher. So in order to do that, just come inside of the intent filter and add these two lines. So we are basically specifying the category in which our activity belong. Inside main.dart, I have made the necessary imports. Now I will create an init state method and I will create some dynamic variables here, like install apps, wallpaper, and a boolean variable called access storage. Now inside of the init state, I will set access storage to false. And then I'll get all the apps which the user has by writing launch assist dot get all apps and it returns a future. So I will trigger some action when launch assist finally gets all the apps and for that I will use the then callback and it returns a variable called apps. Instead of the callback I will simply write set state and set the value of installed apps to apps. Now in order to retrieve the wallpaper we will need to get the read external storage permission from the user. So just over here, I will create a function which returns a future bool and I will name it handle storage permissions and I will mark it as asynchronous. After that, I will get the status of the permission using the permission status class. So I'll write permission status, storage permission status and we will wait until we get a permission status. Then over here, I will create another function which returns a future of type permission status and name it get permission status and I'll mark this function as asynchronous as well. And we'll start by checking the status of the permission that we require using the check permission status function of the permission handler class. And we'll pass in the permission that we need to check for. In this case, it's permission group dot storage. All right, now that we have the permission status, we can use it to determine whether to request for permission from the user or not. We'll request for permission either if the permission is not granted or if it is not disabled by the user. And if this condition satisfies, then we simply use the permission handler class to request permissions. And then we pass in the permission that we need to request, just like this. And this returns a map. So I will create a map variable which has a key of type permission group and value of type permission status. And I will name it as permission status and assign it to this function. Okay, so here we are using the key to extract the permission status value from the map. By the way, these operators are nothing but a check that if the permission status is not null, then return permission status or else return permission status dot unknown. 
you could also write it like this. Cool. So now that we have the permission status, we'll go back to handle storage permissions and I will write that if our permission status is granted, then we return true or else we return false and call this function which handles an invalid function using the permission status. I'll define that in a bit. For now, I'll go back to init state and I will make use of the then callback which the future returns and then we'll receive a value from it and then we'll check again if the permission is granted then we use get wallpaper function of launch assist class to get the wallpaper and it returns the data which we receive inside of this then callback and we set the value of wallpaper to the value returned by the callback also i will invert the current value of access storage and inside of the else part we'll simply lock some value let's quickly define handle invalid permissions as well so it will take a permission status and it checks the problem with the permission status if the permission status is denied, then it throws a platform error and it pretty much does the same if the permission status is disabled. Now let's go inside of the build method. So we want this grid view on top of the background and in order to do that, we would have to use stack and the first child for this stack is going to be wallpaper container and it takes the wallpaper that we defined earlier. Then over here, I will create the wallpaper container widget and it takes this wallpaper variable which we will initialize over here. Now instead of the build method, I will return a container, give it a black color, set its height to the height of the screen using media query and set its width to the width of the screen using media query as well. Then for the child, I'll write image.memory and we want to show a wallpaper if the current value of the wallpaper is not null. But if it is null, then we want to show this. You would need to import dart typed data package to access this class. The wallpaper value which is returned to us is in bytes and in dart bytes are represented using this class and image.memory passes these bytes to process the image then i will set the fit property to boxfit.cover coming back to the stack the second widget is going to be the list of apps so first we check whether the value of installed apps is null if not then we return the foreground widget which takes the installed app or else we simply return a container now foreground widget is going to be a stateful widget which takes the installed apps variable and I'm going to initialize it inside of the constructor. Inside of the state class I will write with single ticker provider state mixin since we are going to be providing some animation here. So first I will create an animation controller then I will create a variable of type animation which animates a double value and I will name it opacity. Then inside of the init state I will initialize them. For the controller, we'll use animation controller and set the vsync to this and give it a duration of 3 seconds. Here we have simply specified the time that our animation would take to complete itself. Then we initialize the opacity variable using tween. Tween allows us to specify a linear interpolation between beginning and an ending value. So our opacity should begin at 0 and end at 1. Then I will use the animate function and pass in the controller. After that, I will come inside of the build method and I will call opacity controller.forward method to animate the icons. And the animation that we are aiming to achieve is a fade in animation. So I'll return a fade transition widget with the opacity set to opacity variable. And then we pass in a container as a child, give it some padding, and then we'll pass in a grid view container which takes widget.installed apps. Then I will create a grid view container and it takes a variable called installed apps. The installed apps is essentially a list. So we'll iterate over it to populate our grid view. So we'll return a grid view dot count, set its cross axis count to four, main axis spacing to 40. And to give it that bouncing effect, I will set its physics to bouncing scroll physics. Then for the children, I will use list dot generate. And the first argument it takes is the length of the list that we are iterating over. In this case, it's installed apps. Now we don't want any null value in there. So I'll write if installed apps is not equal to null, then iterate over the complete list or else iterate over nothing, that is zero. Then we get a callback with an index value and then we'll return a gesture detector, which takes a container as a child. And then we'll pass the column as the child of the container. I will set its main axis size to minimum and the first children is gonna be icon container and it takes the index. After that, just over here, I will create an icon container. 
Then I will return image.memory and to get the icon of the current app just use installed apps index icon and we don't want that to be null as well. So if it is not null then we return the icon back or else we return 0 bytes. I will set its height and width to 50. I received some exceptions the first time I ran this code. So just for precaution, we're gonna wrap this entire return statement with a try catch block. And if we do catch an error, then we'll simply return a container. Coming back to our grid view container, I will just give some space between the icon and the text using a size box. And then I will write the text. And to get the name of the app, you simply have to write installed apps index label. Then I will set its color to white and I will set the text align to center. And we want to control the app title from overflowing. So I'll write max line one overflow text overflow dot ellipsis. Great. Now, how do you launch the app? Well, we'll use the on tap method and return the launch app function of the launcher assist class. And then we pass in the package name of the app that we wish to launch. So in order to get the package name, I'll simply write installed apps index package. Great. Although until now we haven't used the access storage variable which keeps track of the user permission. So at the top of the build method I will write if access storage is true which means that the user has given the permission to read the storage then we will force a rebuild using an empty set state so that as soon as the user gives a permission we can display a wallpaper. But what if the user denies the permission? We should be able to tell the user that he needs to give us the permission in order to show the wallpaper. So I will come inside of the stack and we want to show nothing if the access storage is true. But if it isn't, then we would want to tell the user about it. So I will create a position widget and set its top to 0 and left to 20. Then I will give safe area as its child. After that, we will use the tooltip widget to convey our message to the user. And then I will write gesture detector and we'll set this icon as a child for our gesture detector. Now, if the user wants to give us the permission once again, we'll allow him to do so by simply tapping on this icon. So I'll write on tap and then inside of the on tap method, I will simply paste the handle storage permissions function call. And then I will force a rebuild here as well using an empty set state. Cool. Now let's try and run the app. And there we go. Our app runs perfectly fine. But there's still just one problem and that is if you click on the back button it takes us back to the default launcher we don't want that so come inside of the scaffold widget and wrap the entire stack with another widget called will pop scope and it takes an on will pop which accepts a future and for this future we'll return false now try to run it again all right so the app has launched and notice when I press on the back button, nothing unexpected happens. Now I will set this launcher to be my default launcher. There we go. We finally have a launcher made using Flutter. And while you are making your own launchers, you can go crazy with it and use a lot of different things. For example, you could implement some gesture detection to launch a specific app or you could place some fancy clock in there um, and so on. There are a lot of possibilities when it comes to launchers. All right. So that's it from my side and I hope you enjoyed the video. I also wanted to share a little bit about this course that I was building where we'll create a complete Skype clone in Flutter. After a lot of you requested and wanted me to make a tap to call video calling app. Let me just quickly show it to you. So I have launched the app and the first screen shows the list of users with whom you have contacted. So we'll be using Firebase for the backend. And then the other tab shows you your call logs which are stored locally in an SQLite database. So you will get to see that in action as well. Then we have the contact screen, which lists out all your contacts. And if you're familiar with Skype, you might know that our UI is very close to theirs, as I've tried to clone the UI the best I could. There will be a detailed video in which I'll be explaining about the app in the course introduction video, which I'll be publishing soon this week. So there's a lot to learn about Flutter in this course. I hope you're excited for it. If you are new to this channel, then make sure to hit that subscribe button to receive updates about this course and to get more awesome Flutter content. Also, make sure to like, comment and share the video with the people who you think would be interested in this content. See you soon.